Understand that he knows and he understands what you're dealing with. You may not think so, but I'm here to tell you so. Blake's think about it. God understands everything you're going through. God understands that you need a right now breakthrough. God understands when your friends forsake you. God understands when your family misunderstands you. He knows and he cares when you're down and in despair. Don't you worry, child. God understands. I tell you, he knows and he cares. Don't you worry, no. He answers prayers. He understands. God understands when you feel like giving up. When you're sad because you don't feel love, God understands why you cry, the very tears that you cry. God understands the times you'd rather not live but die, that He knows. Good morning, everybody. Y'all come on in. Detroit, Michigan, I see you. Good morning. Albany, Georgia, I see you. Good morning. Good morning. Union Springs, Alabama, I see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all come on in, everybody. Invite everybody. Share everybody. Tap. Everybody call everybody. Uh, let's get as many people into the room as we can. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Blessings and favor and strength from God our Father on this great day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. I will be thankful and I will bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. His truth endures to all generations. The Lord is good, y'all. I'm going to say it again. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Good morning, yes, Gonzalez, does. Louisiana. Good morning, Chicago. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, New Jersey. Good morning. Good morning, Arizona, Phoenix. Good morning. Good morning, Uptown, Nola, 504. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Y'all come on in, everybody. Invite everybody. Share. Tag. New Orleans, good morning, good morning, good morning. Tennessee, Paris, Tennessee, good morning. I need everybody to invite, I need everybody to share, I need everybody to tag. I need everybody in the room uh, to do whatever you need to do to get as many people into this room as you can. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. morning. Y'all come on in. Every tear you shed, God understands. Your circumstance, your situation, your complications, God knows. Come on, everybody, everybody, invite everybody, share everybody, tag. Let's get as many people into the room as we possibly can. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. You may be wondering right now, where is God in all of this that I'm dealing with? Hope you all are doing well well today. I pray that you all are doing extremely well today. And that uh, all things are working in your favor. I'm excited about God. I'm excited about what God is doing and what God is saying and what we're getting you ready to see. Right now, I really am excited. Good morning, everybody. SWG Horses and Inspiration, thank you so much uh, for, for your love today. Let's see. I don't see 
friends Facebook when your on family on misunderstands you he knows, he knows and he cares when you're down and in despair I'm not seeing it God understands I tell you he knows and he cares Some reason I, I don't see my page. this morning. So I am only on YouTube right now. God understands when you're sad because you don't feel love. God understands why you cry, the very tears that you cry. I don't know what's going on. You'd rather not live, but it is what it is. And he, knows, and, he knows, and he cares when you're down. When you're down and in Closet talk by Keisha. Don't you worry that Keisha he boy. Thank you so much, Keisha. I love you, my God bless us. Thank you. I'll figure this out tomorrow, but. Uh, for today, it looks like I'm only going to be on YouTube. So I need everybody to share uh, this link to YouTube. I mean, to Facebook if you're on YouTube. I could not get on Facebook for some reason this morning. I don't know what happened. But uh, it is what it is. So. You try to hide. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm only going to be a few minutes today. Uh, first of all, I'm tired. Um, I was tired, boss. <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, yesterday was a long day. I preached um, three times yesterday. And um, uh, my body is kind of drained and tired. And then this morning I have uh, someplace I have to be for 11 o'clock. So I'm not going to be long today, but but we're going back into uh, emotional healing. Um, I got so many, so many, so many, so many people uh, who reached out to me and asked me, said, Bishop, will you go one more week on emotional healing? One more week. Just give me one more week. Uh, they felt like God was speaking directly to them uh, all last week, so... We're going back in, and uh, I prayed about it, and God says, okay, uh, uh, this week would be on emotional healing also. I was reading scripture this morning, and I'm going to be very brief today. I need everybody to share this to um, to Facebook, please, because I could not get on Facebook for some reason. Uh, my Facebook icon disappeared this morning. It's not in my in my list of um, options to go live on. Uh, so I need you to share it to Facebook. I was reading this morning, and this is what I read. I was reading in Proverbs 17 and 22, and this is what it said. Uh, Proverbs 17 and 22 says, A merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit drieth to the bones. He says, A merry heart doeth good like medicine, or in other words, it heals you, it 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 restores you, it refreshes you. Uh it's like medicine. It it replenishes you, it it builds you up. He says when your heart is in a good place, uh it it causes positive results as it relates to your body, he says, but a broken spirit a broken spirit, uh, to be broken on the inside. Uh, and that's the emotional state of many people who watch me today. Broken on the inside. Broken internally. Um, emotionally just all over the place and uh, nothing intact as it relates to uh, their, their inner man. He says, when you're broken on the inside, it literally dries you all the way to the bone. Or in other words, when you don't have emotional 
uh, stability or emotional strength, it literally kills you slowly. It literally dries you to the bone. When when you are emotionally in disrepair, when your heart is all over the place, when your heart needs healing, I'm talking to somebody in this room. When your heart needs healing, it's it's impossible to get your head right. When your heart needs healing, I'm talking to somebody. He says, a merry heart. He says, when your heart is right, on the inside, everything begins to line up on the outside. A merry heart is like medicine. But a broken spirit dries you up. That's why you feel like, you know, I am, I'm, I'm getting weaker and weaker and I'm getting more and more volatile and uh, uh, fear looks like it's, it's, it's overwhelming me. That's why you have these feelings of being overwhelmed. Uh, these feelings like I, I can't take anymore. It's because internally you're broken. And when you're broken internally, it doesn't matter how much you fake it externally. When you're broken internally, it doesn't matter how much you smile externally. When you're broken internally, it does not matter. I'm going to say it again. It does not matter what you do externally. When you're broken internally, when you are broken internally, it literally causes your your external man to dry up. See, what people don't realize is first spiritual, then natural. First spiritual, then natural. First spiritual, then natural. You will be on the outside what you feel on the inside. Your external man will accomplish. Your external man will become whatever your internal man already is. Your external man adapts whatever is happening on the inside. First spiritual, then natural. First spiritual, then natural. Everybody wants to get their natural together while overlooking the spiritual, but it does not matter how naturally you you come together. If you're not spiritually connected like you should be, if you're not spiritually strong like you should be, if you're not internally strong, that's why the Bible says I would above all things that you'd prosper and be in health, right? In your natural. But get this, he says, he says I would above all things that you prosper and be in health as you already are in your spirit, in your soulish realm. I'm talking to somebody in this room. Uh, we live in a society where everybody focuses on the outside, but doesn't matter how superb uh, you look on the outside, doesn't matter how splendid you seem on the outside, if you're broken on the inside, he says it will dry you to the bone. Because listen, you can only fake it so long. At some point, the real you is going to surface. And if the real you is full of pain, if the real you is full of unmanaged emotions, if the real you is decaying internally, it doesn't matter how much you fake it externally. Your life is going to come up or down to your emotional state. That's why every day I need to make a, an official talk to me, uh, an official invitation. I need to give a official invitation to the Holy Spirit to come in and do his work in me. And what does the Holy Spirit do? He comes in and he drives out anything that is not like God. He comes in and he helps us to manage moments. He comes in. Are y'all here? He comes in. The Holy Spirit comes in and he, he rebukes us and reproves us as it relates to our sin 
and the things that keep us uh, bottled up and keep us uh, suffering internally. The Holy Spirit does an internal work in us that begins to produce external evidences. So every day I need to invite the aid of the Holy Spirit. Are you here to help me uh, to get my internal man right? Because the Holy Spirit can reach some places in me that I cannot reach in myself. And, and, and listen, listen, you know what sin is. Sin is a wedge that is driven between you and God so that you don't benefit from the connection with God. And when you get disconnected from God, according to John, you stop bearing fruit. Your life becomes unfruitful. Are you here? Every branch that is in me or connected to me bears fruit. Are you here? Uh, when you stop bearing fruit, what happens is uh, it is it is an indication that somewhere along the line, the chain or the connection between you and God has been broken. And now what happens is you are open prey for the enemy to do his work in you. You become an open and obvious target for the enemy to begin to assault your heart and assault your emotional well-being and break you down because now you are you are, you have left your covering. Every day I need to invite the Holy Spirit Every day, I need to summon the Holy Spirit. I told you every morning when you get up, you need to be saying, good morning, Holy Spirit. You have a legal right to govern and rule and direct the orchestra of my life today. Today, I take my life and my existence out of my hands and I put it in your hands and I ask you now, God, to do your work in me. And as God begins to work through the Holy Spirit in you, he begins to break up everything in you that keeps you stuck and tied to the things that are killing you. Somebody give, give the Holy Spirit an invitation right now. I need you to say right there in your living room, in your boardroom, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Glory to God. Because apart from him, apart from him, get this, uh, I, I can't be happy. Apart from him and apart from his work and apart from my connection with God, I'll never have real joy. And according to Proverbs 17 and 22, if I don't have real joy, I will operate in real brokenness. And I will, get this, dry up. And what does it mean to dry up? All of the life leaves. The Holy Spirit is the life-giving agent of God. His job is to give life. And when you're emotionally drained, there's a reason we call it emotionally drained. To drain means to, to, to release everything that is in. When you're emotionally drained, it means that you are emotionally dried up. You have released everything you got. I ain't, I, I, I've, you've heard people say this. I, I've cried so much, I can't even cry no more. I've taken so much, I can't even take anymore. I'm preaching to somebody right now. I've taken so much, I can't even take, I don't even have any more emotions to invest in this situation. I've given it all I got. I'm drained. That's what the mismanagement of emotions or the inability to manage emotions does to you. According to Proverbs 17 and 22, you end up with a broken spirit and it dries you all the way to the bone. This is my this is my prayer for you today. My prayer is that there will be a resurgence of joy in you. 
But there cannot be a resurgence of joy in you without you reconnecting and plugging back in. I keep telling you all that you and I are not independent. We're codependent. And that means we don't work unless we're plugged in. I don't care how pretty your refrigerator is. Unless it's plugged in, it's not functioning properly. Huh? Go and unplug your refrigerator and see what it does to your food. It's going to dry it out. And eventually, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to throw the whole refrigerator away. Because uh, what is in that refrigerator will be infested. What is in that refrigerator will be so bad that it will cause the entire refrigerator to stench. Well, what happens when you and I have mismanaged emotions within us and we're not plugged in? Uh, what is in us begins to have such a stench that it ruins us from the inside out. Are you here? When you harbor hate, when you harbor jealousy, are you here? When when you when you harbor anger, you're not plugged in. And when you're not plugged in, all of that stuff begins to fester on the inside of you and infest you. And it dries you according to Proverbs 17, 22. It dries you all the way to the bone. Mamuna to Barry Safa, thank you so much. It dries you all the way to the bone. So a merry heart, that's why each and every person in this room needs to make sure that you you do maintenance on your heart. You got to get those stuff out of your heart. The Bible says, let all bitterness and anger and wrath and clamor and evil, evil speaking be put away from you. He says, you got to get all of that stuff out of your heart so that, so that when God sees you and uh, uh, God does not see you through clouded lenses or see you through the or behind your sin, but rather he sees you behind the blood. I'm talking to somebody in this room. Listen, listen to Proverbs 4 and 23 and I'm done. Diva D, thank you so very much for your super chat. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. He says you need to be doing constant maintenance on your heart. And the heart represents what? The center of emotions. That's why when the Bible talks about that peace, it says it's going to keep your heart and your mind. He says it's going to keep you, this peace is going to keep you emotionally intact and keep you from going over the emotional edge and keep you from losing it in the moment, right? He says you got to keep your heart with all diligence. How do I keep my heart with all diligence? I pray without ceasing. How do I keep my heart with all diligence? I have constant connection with God. I worship. Worship connects me to God and connects God to me. Are you here? And what, what is happening in heaven starts happening in my heart and in my mind and in my life. It attaches me to God and attaches God to me. He says, keep your heart with all diligence because get this, eventually out of it will flow the issues of your life. What does that mean? Your life is going to look like your heart. If I open up your heart, and 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 I find uh, hatred and anger and animosity and meanness and fear and all of these different negative emotions. Guess what? That is the the direction in which your life is going to gravitate for out of it, out of what? Out of your heart will flow the issues of your life. So what does that teach us? Inductive and deductive reasoning. If you don't like what's happening in your life, it might be because you need to change some stuff that's happening in your heart. And the only way you can change stuff that's happening in your heart is you have to connect with who my grandmother called the heart fixer. 
and the mind regulator. You have to have a connection with God. You got to reconnect with God. A lot of y'all are disconnected and you don't realize it. Whenever you can live in perpetual sin, you're disconnected. Whenever you can be comfortable just doing anything and everything and never feel any godly sorrow or never feel the spirit of repentance or, or never feel the need to apologize to God, you're disconnected. You got to reconnect because out of your heart will flow the issues of your life. Are you here? Your emotions cannot be the government of your life. <laughs> You cannot allow your life to be governed by, by your emotions and by your feelings. I'm preaching to somebody right now. Keep, so he says, keep your heart. He says, he says, do maintenance on your heart. Every day you need to be checking your heart to see if there's anything in your heart that does not align itself with the will of God. And you need to be, get this, you need to be investi investigating and eliminating. CW, thank you so much for your super chat. You need to be investigating and eliminating. I'm going to say it again. You need to be, I need to be, we need to be investigating and eliminating. We need to be investigating and eliminating. Eliminating everything that is in our hearts but 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 you need to be checking your heart constantly he says keep your heart with all diligence for out of it will flow the issues of your life listen to what he says in verse number 24 put away from you a forward mouth he says watch the conversations you hold and watch what you say watch what you say watch what you say because what you say is reinvesting itself into your heart. It comes out of your mouth, goes into your ear, gets into your spirit, saturates your heart. So watch what you say. You cannot live a good life, a good, healthy, emotional life, speaking poisonous words. And a lot of you are worried about what everybody else is saying, but it's not what they're saying that's poisoning you. It's what you're saying to yourself. It's the conversation you hold in your own head. Watch words that cater to your emotional decline. Watch words that cater to your emotional decline. Watch what you speak over your life in a negative manner because it will produce negative results in your life. Out of the abundance, here we go, heart, mouth, heart, mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In other words, what you, whatever you speak uh, abundantly out of your mouth, it is spoken abundantly out of your mouth because it is plentifully in your heart. And then you speak it out of your mouth and it goes into your ear and your heart recycles it. So now your emotional distress is increased. Your emotional dysfunction is increased because you never change your words. So you never change what you're feeding your inner man. So you can never reverse the curse, if you will. Are you here? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations, here we go, heart, mouth again, and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Are you here? Your heart and your mouth align themselves with each other. That's why he says, keep away from you a forward mouth and perverse lips. What do perverse lips do? They pervert. They cause perversion. And what is perversion? Perversion is acting, thinking, and living in a way that is foreign to the will of God or against the will of God. Why, when, when am I emotionally uh, out of control? When I am outside of the will of God. So emotional uh, lack of control 
is perversion. You thought perversion was just, uh, you know, sex and drinking and lying. Well, I want to submit to you that when you are emotionally out of control, you are operating in the spirit of perversion because that ain't what your heart was intended to do and intended for. Your heart was intended to be yielded to God. But but you're yielding it to anger and fear and and all of these other things. It is a misuse of the purpose. That's what perversion is. And when you are emotionally all over the place and chaotic, your heart is not being used for what it was intended and created for. Your spirit, soul and body should be presented blameless, according to scripture, to the Lord. Your heart is not to be harboring hate. Your heart is not for the purpose of harboring fear. Your heart is not for the purpose of of harboring jealousy and all of these other things. That is the enemy's perversion of your heart. Are you here? Why does Adam and Eve get kicked out of the garden? Because there's a perversion of their heart. Are you here? Are you here? And now they have allowed, they have allowed the perversion of their heart to send them into emotional chaos. Now the spirit of jealousy has entered entered into the garden. Now they want what God has. Are you here? This is where this emotional mismanagement begins. Now they want what God has. Jealousy has entered the garden. And not only jealousy, guilt has entered the garden because they, they're sowing on fig leaves trying to cover up. They're feeling guilty for what they've done. So all of these it, it mismanaged emotions begin in Genesis because of sin. Ooh. I'm preaching to somebody. Y- y'all better be glad I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. I got to get I got to get dressed and I got to go. Y'all please share this cuz I'm not on Facebook today. I'm only on YouTube. Please share this. So if I'm going if I'm going to get if I'm going to operate an emotional healing. If I'm going to get healed emotionally, I got to get back to God and I got to get back to the basics. And I got to, I got to begin to deal with the issues of my heart and I got to put away your forward mouth and perverse lips. I got to put far from me. And then verse 25 says, let thine eye look right on and thy eyelids look straight before thee. I got to keep my eyes on God. I got to keep my eyes on God and the purpose for which God has created me. I got to keep my eyes on God. I got to, I got to, I got to refocus. Somebody declare in this room, I got to refocus. When, when my emotions are chaotic, it is because my lenses are out of focus. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus. Somebody said, what you looking at? I'm looking at Jesus. I'm looking at Jesus because he heals my emotions. I'm looking unto Jesus because he sustains my emotions. I'm looking unto Jesus because, because he holds me together emotionally. I'm looking unto Jesus because he he decreases the the chaos of my life i'm looking unto jesus i gotta refocus jessica i gotta refocus al i gotta refocus kevin i gotta refocus tanya i gotta refocus marlo i gotta refocus caroline i gotta refocus roisha i have to refocus i gotta refocus i gotta look unto jesus who is the author and the finisher of my faith. So I got to get back to 
my my happy place, my joyful place. And I can't get back to my joyful place uh, without reconnecting and refocusing on God because a merry spirit is like medicine. It heals you. When your spirit is right, man, when your spirit is right, everything that pertains to you begins to line up and get right. But when your spirit is wrong, wow. Everything that pertains to you begins to shatter and dissipate and dry up. I got to keep my heart with all diligence. So that means I got to be careful of my conduct. I got to be careful of my contacts. I got to be careful what I do. And I got to be careful that I don't connect with people who don't live in a way that caters to my connection with God. I got to make sure that I'm not connected to folk who are disconnected from him because I can't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers because some of their, their stuff begins to rub off on me. If I'm going to get myself together emotionally, I have to be connected to people who cater to my emotional well-being and not people who cause my emotional dysfunction. I'm looking under Jesus. I'm refocusing, recalibrating, reconnecting. Here we go. And recommitting. All right. Father, thank you for your people today on this Monday morning. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for doing what only you can do. Prick the hearts of your people by your word. Convict the hearts of your people by your word and convert the hearts of your people by your word. I thank you for convicting and converting. I thank you for convicting, making us acknowledge our wrong. And then I thank you for converting us, making us change our ways, helping us, Father, to be who you've called us to be. We bind and rebuke every emotional dysfunction in this room. I thank you, Father, that your people are going to walk in emotional health, I thank you that we're going to walk in emotional well-being. I thank you, Father, that none of these things that the enemy is conspiring to use against us is going to be able to work and that no weapon that is formed against us will be able to prosper. Thank you now, God, for doing what only you can do. Be God and be God all by yourself. Be our strength. Be our hope. And for that person in this room who has mismanaged emotions, I thank you now that today marks a brand new beginning and that old things are passed away. And behold, look, all things will become brand new. I thank you, Father, that we'll have new mindsets and new dispositions and new attitudes. I thank you, Father, that we will walk in newness. I thank you, Father, that we will not be manipulated and dominated emotionally by old stuff and that our minds will no longer be consumed with old stuff. I thank you, Father, that you are doing a new thing in the hearts, minds, and lives of your people and that when we leave this room today, we will be walking in victory. We will not be victims. We will be victors. We will not be victims of circumstances, but we will be victors through Christ, our strength and our redeemer. Father, I thank you that somebody is getting ready to laugh again and mean it. Somebody is getting ready to have peace again. Somebody is getting ready to have real joy again. I thank you, Father, that there's a rekindling and a resurgence of joy in this room and that peace like a river is going to flow through this room and the hearts and minds of every person under the sound of this voice today is going to align with your will and with your word. Glory to God. 
I speak peace in this room. I speak peace in this room. I speak peace in our homes and on our jobs and in our lives and in our hearts. I thank you, Father, that we will not fake it till we make it. I thank you that we are breaking the back of emotional distress and anger and depression and every uh, thing the enemy tries to use against us. We break the back of the enemy. We come against every demonic agenda and every demonic force that tries to hinder and hamper the peace that you have called us to walk in. The scripture says you have called us to peace. We have a calling of peace on our lives. And we love you for it. We love you for it. We love you for it. Now, God, somebody came into this room feeling like giving up. They were emotionally distraught and they felt like giving up. But I thank you, Father, that they will leave this room feeling like getting up. Glory to God. They're getting up out of depression and out of anger and out of pain and out of sorrow. They are getting up to God be the glory. Glory to God. And we forever give you glory. We forever give you honor. And we forever give you praise. In Jesus' name. Can I, can I prophesy over your life that God is getting ready to give you authentic, real joy? I'm going to say it again. Can I prophesy over your life and tell you that God is getting ready to give you authentic, genuine, real joy? This stuff that, that you've been taught, fake it till you make it, the day of that is over with. No more faking. No more faking. No more faking. Because whom the sun sets free is not it doesn't operate in a fake freedom. We're free indeed. God is setting you free. You will no longer be an emotional basket case and an emotional catastrophe. You're getting ready to walk in real joy and real freedom. The sun is setting you free today. Hallelujah. I decree it over your life. I speak it over your life. And it is so. And it shall not be otherwise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Man, listen, you know what I want you to do? I want you to stay in God's face. And I want you to stay in God's face. Stay in, and, 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 and the way to God's face is at his feet. The weight of God's face is at his feet. Humble yourself. Humble yourself before the Lord. And he will exalt you. And if you don't mind getting at his feet, he'll give you the privilege of seeing his face. Hallelujah. And he will call, the Lord will cause his face to shine upon you and God will grant you peace. Terry Carter, thank you so much. The Lord, I'm going to say it again, will cause his face to shine upon you. And the Lord will grant you peace. Hallelujah. All right, I got to go. Everybody today who wants to be a blessing, I don't know what happened with uh, Facebook today, uh, but it is what it is. Um, for some reason on my device, the option for Facebook is not even here this morning. So, so it is what it is. Um, but I want all of you to share this on your Facebook uh, so that even those on Facebook who didn't get a chance to see it today will get a chance to see it, all right? Hallelujah. Uh, everybody who wants to be a blessing to our church today on this Monday morning, let's start this week off right. All of the giving information is on your screen. You can uh, be a blessing through Cash App, dollar sign NHM 1030. Secondly, you can be a blessing through PayPal on our church's website, www.newhomeministries.org. Thirdly, you can be a blessing through the Givelify app, put in New Home Full Gospel Ministries. You see a little picture of me and a bigger picture of our church. Uh, thirdly, you can be, at, fourthly, should I say, you can be a blessing through text to give. Uh, text NHFWCBR to 54244. NHFWCBR to 54244. You can be a blessing to uh, the work of God and the house of God. And I want you to do it today. 
uh, if this ministry blesses you, I want you in turn to be a blessing to this ministry. I thank you all so much. Uh, those who want to mail your seeds in, you can do it by mailing it to 1605 Robert C. Blake Sr. Drive, New Orleans, Louisiana. That's New Home Ministry, 1605 Robert C. Blake Sr. Drive, New Orleans, Louisiana. All right. 1605 Robert C. Blake Sr. Drive. Chanel Adams, thank you so much for your super chat. Uh, Terry Carter, thank you so much for your super chat. I love you all and I appreciate you so very, very much. Uh, Let's get a song under our belt. We're getting ready to go. Everybody, please subscribe. Those who are on YouTube watching because you weren't on, you weren't able to get on Facebook, please subscribe to my YouTube uh there it is press that subscribe button press that bell if you will i think it's a bell press it and uh subscribe to my youtube today all right i love you 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 y'all please subscribe um uh follow me on facebook uh pastor samuel r blakes and samuel r blakes follow me on youtube bishop samuel r blakes and uh, on Instagram, at SR Uh Let's get a song under our belt. And uh, we're getting ready. We're getting ready to go. Let me see here. Uh, I'm winning today. I don't know about you, but I'm winning today. Here we go. God bless. Go on and win today. I'm winning I'm against winning my emotions today. and everything else. I refuse to lose. Thank you, Jesus. I'm winning the day Cause that's what I choose Winning the day Got my mind on victory I'm winning the day Nothing's gonna stop me I refuse to lose. I refuse to lose. I'm winning today. Cause that's what I choose. Winning today. Got my mind on victory. I'm winning. That's what I choose. Cause that's what I choose. I'm winning the day. I've got my mind on victory. I, I, I'm winning the day. Nothing is gonna stop me. Cause I refuse. In my health, I'm winning. 
winning. I'm winning. Yes, I'm winning. I refuse to lose. I'm winning. I'm winning. All right, I want you all to have an amazing day. You serve an amazing God, and you are amazing people. And you know what I got to say to you today? Go get it because God says it is absolutely positively yours, my friend. Have a blessed day. 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 And uh, be happy today. I, I Let me say, I am happier uh, today than I've ever been in my life. I feel, I feel just refreshed, renewed, and revived. And I pray that God gives you that today. I pray that God gives you that today. I pray that God gives you that. I can honestly say I'm happy. I'm happier than I've ever been in my life. I have more peace and more joy than I've ever had in my life. And and that's my prayer for you today. I pray that God just whew, heals you up and builds you up. And I pray that you will step up to the assignment that God has for your life and that um, this will be your winning season. Have an amazing day. I love you. God bless. Strength to you. I was giving what I thought was all Until standing at an altar call I heard God say I deserve more And then I heard him say There is more that I require of you There is more that I desire of you So much more I've placed inside of you Give me more. Receive my more. Receive my more. Receive my more. You deserve it, Father. Receive my more. See my more. Receive my more. See my more. Receive my more. You deserve it, Jesus. Receive my more. All that you've done for me. I just want to give you more. Receive my more. God said. Just think about the ways I've made. Just think about the price I've paid. What I've done for you. How I've seen you through. I deserve more. And then the Lord said. For the times you cry. For every time I wiped your eyes, I deserve, I deserve so much more. Receive it, receive my more. You deserve it, Father. Receive my more. There is none like you. Receive my more. I just want to give you more. Receive.
receive my more there is more than I require of you there is more than I desire of you so much more I placed inside of you give me more there is more than I require of you so much more I desire of you so much more I place inside of you Give me more.